Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to the next video in the AWS IoT playlist where we'll interact with our Truck One Things device shadow from a web page. We'll get started by creating a Cognito identity pool, which in turn will create two IAM roles, authenticated and unauthenticated. So I'll click Manage Identity Pools, give the pool a name, and select the checkbox to enable access to unauthenticated identities, then create the pool. Here we see that this will create two IAM roles, the auth role and the unauth role. So I'll go ahead and click allow, and then jump over to IAM, go into roles, and search for the unauth role. I'll select it, click add permissions, attach policies, search for the AWS IoT data access policy, select it, and attach. Now let's jump over to S3 and create a bucket to host the website. I'll start out by clicking block public access settings for this account and ensure that block all public access is off. Then I'll go into buckets and create a new bucket give it a name, enable ACLs, disable block all public access, and acknowledge, and create the bucket. Inside of the truck1 directory, I've created a new folder named website. I've added two images for a picture with the truck's lights on and off. Then inside the index.html file, we see there's a button with an ID of truck lights event button and a div with preloaded images for the truck images. There's also an AWS configure JavaScript file and an index.js file. The AWS configuration JavaScript file needs to have three values set for AWS configuration parameters. The first is the pool ID which we can get by jumping back into the AWS console and going to Cognito and copying the ID and paste it in. The endpoint we could get from the endpoint JSON file, copy it, paste, and for the region, I'm using US East 1. I'll save that file and look at the index JavaScript file. Of course, we're requiring the AWS SDK and the AWS IoT device SDK. I've created constant for the things name, which is truck1. Here we're setting AWS configs region to the configuration region, and then the config credentials by instantiating a new instance of AWS Cognito identity credentials, passing it the identity pool ID. I'll let you read through the AWS config credentials.get method if you're interested, but I'll jump down to the handle truck image function, which takes a new light status, which is returned as a result of an API call interacting with the device's shadow. Here, if the current light status is equal to the new light status, we'll just return, but if the new light status is true, then we'll display the image of the truck with its lights on, else we'll display the image of the truck with its lights off. So with this in place, let's jump over to the terminal and push this code up to S3. So I'll start by changing directory into the website folder inside of truck1's folder, and then issue an AWS S3 copy recursively, setting the ACL to public read for all files in the current directory into our S3 bucket. Now, if we jump over to S3, go into our bucket, we see our objects. Now I'll jump back into the terminal, back up one directory, and for this demo, I'll run the demo2 program. So here we see truck1 has been registered and the initial state is setting the lights to on. 
because remember, this is where we left off when we were interacting with Truck One Shadow in a prior demo. So now let's jump back over to S3, click on the index.html file, and open. And we see when the page loads, it defaults to the lights are on, and we can toggle Truck One's lights, and now the lights are off, which is done by making an API call to AWS IoT Core and interacting with the device's shadow. Now we'll go ahead and toggle the lights on again, then jump over to the terminal, and we see the updates in the device's state. So that concludes this video on interacting with a device's shadow via a web page using the AWS SDK. And that will conclude the videos in this playlist for a bit as I continue to build out the Raspberry Pi playlist, which will help people to build a foundation in working with the Raspberry Pi. Then I'll turn my attention back to this playlist and show you how to connect a Raspberry Pi to AWS IoT. I hope you've enjoyed the videos in this series thus far, and I hope to see you back here soon. And as always, if you found this video informative, go ahead and give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I add more videos to the playlist, for connecting a Pi to AWS IoT, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.